hello and welcome back. Um, so I decided I wanted to do a little tutorial, if you will. Um, it's basically starting from scratch. Um, where we're going to start with everything, including like a pre-flight check and everything, pretending that you know absolutely nothing about flying. Um, and then what you can apply in the simulator. Uh, again, I am a real world pilot. Um, I just am not current. I haven't flown in a long time. Part of this whole channel idea was to document um, my progress and basically getting refreshed on um, any you know, any and all my flying skills before I actually get back into an airplane to try to um, uh, basically become current again. Uh, so we're going to just come along for the ride, but I'm going to start from the very beginning for those of you or any of you out there that uh, may know nothing about flying, but you're thinking, well, I'd like to try it, but I want to know, I want to do it in a way that is kind of realistic instead of just hopping in, hitting the throttle, and, you know, doing crazy maneuvers all over the place, which is certainly a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I've done that. Um, but if you want to be realistic, then, you know, we're going to cover a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, now, with this particular episode, I'm going to start with the pre-flight checks. We're not even actually going to get in the air or start the engine, but... It, to relate to the real world, these are the things we'd do um, on the ground before we'd actually get into the real, real airplane um, and start it up and go flying. And you'd do this pretty much every time you come to the airplane. Um, effectively, if it leaves your sight, um, you know, you've gone around the back of a building for any amount of time, really, um, and you're not line of sight with your aircraft, then you wanna, you're going to want to redo this pre-flight check because um, you never know what can happen. Um, typically it's, you know, if you're out of sight, it's for a short period. So, you know, you do a cursory check, maybe not the complete thing. Um, but you know, if you've gone overnight, then you certainly want to do the entire pre-flight all over again, um, er each and every time, or even after, even if you've landed and you've gone to lunch, um, for an hour or two and you come back, you want to do the full pre-flight again, just to ensure everything is good. So let's kick this off and, uh, we typically start at the pilot's door. Um, so let's come on down here and head on towards the pilot's door. And what we would do, oh, we've got little pilots in there. This is with the new update, so um, I'm going to be seeing some of these. I've flown it, obviously, since, but I haven't done a whole lot of close-up stuff. But anyway, what we would first do is actually climb inside, would open the door, get inside, and so let's hop in there now and go cockpit view. Um, and the first thing we do, let me put the yoke back. Um, if you see there's a little pinhole right there, there's what they call a control wheel lock. Um, it would actually be a, a metal bar that goes in there and it kind of curves down over this way. And then oftentimes it has a flag on it that will come down and cover the keyhole. So you can't really put the key in. Um, without taking the control lock out. But you want to take the control lock out. Um, you want to make sure any of your required papers are in the plane. Um, registration, um, no maintenance log, or no, maybe not maintenance logs, but registration, um, anything you need to be in the airplane at, at the time of flying. Um, typically, you'd enter uh, the current OBS, Hobbs, me read, bleh, Hobbs meter reading onto a tax sheet. And the Hobbs meters down here, basically how many hours are on the engine. Um, so that indicates, you know, when you started um, or what it was at before you took the plane. Um, and, and you do that with your own plane or uh, with a rental just to kind of keep track of, you know, how many hours you've put in um, on a given flight. And, and you need it for your logbook, too. So you want to really record when your start and stop was. Um, let's see. Let me move the yoke again. Um, so what we would do now is uh, we'd actually take, we'd have the keys in hand, not in the ignition, but actually put them up here on the dashboard in sight so you could see them through the windscreen. So when you're outside, if you look in and you're doing a pre-flight around the prop or anything like that, and you notice the keys aren't there, you'd stop, go back inside, make sure you know where the keys are, and then not in the ignition, and the ignition is not in both or anything, because that means the engine could start. Um, and you always want to treat it like it's live anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, keys up on top uh, on the dash so you could you could see them from the outside. Then we'll turn our master switch on. Check our fuel gauges. 
they look good. We don't trust them all the time, but we like to be able to see that. Um, and then we want to put in uh, 30 degrees of flaps. So in this particular plane, that's full flaps. Um, and then fuel shutoff valve, we'll make sure it is on, which up right here is off. So let's flip that down to on. And we'll turn the master switch off. Okay. Now, if it were nighttime, it would certainly check all our strobe light, um, nav lights, our beacon. Um, and it's a good idea to check those even during the daytime if you haven't noticed them in a while um, or you haven't checked them in a while. But most certainly at night, you want to check to make sure they're working. Um, so now we'll hop back outside. And we'll go to showcase. And now what we do is, I don't think it's modeled on this plane in the sim here. But there's a belly drain right underneath here. It, yeah, it looks like it might actually be right there where that round plate is. There's a, a belly drain. You take a fuel cup and you push it up in there and take a fuel sample. And you'll be looking for uh, if there's any water in the fuel. Um, and so you'll have the, the bluish fuel. It's dyed a little bit blue for aviation fuel. Um, you'll see that floating on top of it. But if you see a clear liquid at the bottom, because the water would be heavier to sit down at the bottom, then um, you've got water in the fuel. So you'd want to you know, keep draining until there's no more water in that belly drain. Um, and there's two other spots you're going to check as well uh, for draining. Um, so that would be first thing. Let me go up a little bit. Um, and then you come down the, the empennage, fuselage and empennage. Um, fuselage basically... You know this part of the airplane here the um you know from the nose toward the tail um and the empennage is actually this in the back here where your vertical stabilizer and your horizontal stabilizer are that's technically called your empennage <laughs> um but anyway you look along the side here and make sure there's no wrinkles or dents or anything obvious like that um really seeing anything um, let's see let me check that rudder gust lock now rudder gust lock would be sorry, excuse me up here basically there would be uh, there's a, a gust lock you can put on which is it runs it's like two pieces of wood that would uh, with padding on it obviously so to protect the, the metal but it's Almost like you make the a, a sandwich out of the, the rudder. So it would be two pieces of wood, one on this side and one on this side. And there would be a bolt that goes through the hinge section here. See this little space right here? Um, there would be a bolt that goes through there and with a wing nut on one side. So your bolt goes through the wing nut on the other side for the wood. And basically with the wood like that, it, if the wind blows, it's not going to let this part of your tail the rudder flop around in the breeze and that uh, coupled with the control lock in the uh, control yoke <clears throat> that's the same sort of thing it helps to prevent it but you don't want to stress that metal in, inside either so that's what that rudder gust locks for um, you check your leading edge of your horizontal stabilizer uh, make sure again no dings or dents or anything like that um, you would move your elevator up and down, which would be, you know, just pull that up and down, make sure it's freedom of movement. Um, and then you could check your connectors here, make sure all the bolts and stuff are tight. If you <clears throat> could see any in here, you do the same. Also, um, check any of your hinges you can see through there. Um, let me come over to this side. Uh, and again, we would check our elevator. Um, and there's a, a little connector here. If you see, there's your trim tab on it. So this whole, this entire piece is part of the elevator. But this one section that's also hinged, that's your trim tab. So when you adjust the trim inside, it's just this little piece that moves. And it forces the elevator to go up or down based on the deflection of that trim tab. So we just keep an eye on those and make sure that everything else is tight there. Uh, and looks secure, nothing's dented or dinged or broken. 
um, and you'd visually take a look at your lights, make sure they're not cracked or broken. Um, obviously, you know, any obvious damage. Um, and then we come around uh, and look at this side of the fuselage, empennage fuselage. Um, it's this little hoop down here, that's a tie-down spot. Uh, if it was tied down, you'd actually have a rope going out to the pavement. and you'd, So at this point, back here, you'd untie that too um, and, and to make sure it's released. Uh, let's see. Continue to check the fuselage. Okay. And we come up to the trailing edge of the right wing. And we're going to check the flap. Basically grab it and give it a nudge, make sure it's secure. Um, it would also come in here and look for the hardware. Oh, I got this moving pretty quickly. Yeah, see there's pins and nuts in there you'd want to check. And if you see any cotter pins, you want to make sure you check that they're secure um, where they should be. And your instructor, if you did do real life, would go over all that. I'm just given the, the summary of it. Um, so, you know, don't take my word as gospel if you're around a real airplane. This is just for the flight sim and just for knowledge for uh, simmers out there. Um, and then we we'll continue down the wing. We would grab the uh, aileron, which is this piece with the ribs on it. And would move it up and down, you know, slowly, make sure that it was uh, free, and then it too has uh, control rods and and cotter pins and stuff in there. You're gonna want to look to make sure are secure. Uh, we come out to the wing tip. Um, look for any damages there. Look at the nav light here. Make sure it doesn't appear broken or or, or damaged or blown out or anything. Uh, leading edge. Again, basically looking for any dents, things, damage, um, anything that would cause concern. Here's another one of those tie-down spots, so if there's a rope there, you'd untie that and bring it down um, to, to release that. And check this strut. Make sure it's good. And that's, again, more of the leading edge there. This is the vent opening for the vent inside for cool air. So let's see, make sure that's not blocked. It's not crucial uh, to flight, really. It's more of uh, passenger comfort uh, or pilot comfort for that matter. But it's nice to have in the summer. So yeah, you want to make sure you have that okay. Um, and then next we have uh, make sure the tire is inflated. You want to check. Um, you, know, you can step on it, give it a kick. If you have a pressure gauge, that's even better. Um, to check properly let's pop down here you want to take a look at the brake pad back here best you can make sure these brake lines are secure and not leaking anything um, let's see and then once we're here as well um, we're going to pop up a little and I'll rotate yeah it's not really pictured in the sim here either Whoa, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> I hit five on my keyboard. That recentered behind the whole plane. Let's get back in here. All right. Uh, it's not really uh, modeled here, but on the wing, just like I talked about on the belly earlier, there's another fuel drain, because um, this whole section right here is basically your fuel tank. Um, and so there'd be a drain right around in here that you'd put your fuel cup under um, and take a, a fuel sample again, checking for water, making sure that the fuel looks good, has the right color, um, and there's no water in it. Um, and then at this point, we would rotate. And this little thing down here is actually a step. You would use your right foot on that and this little grab handle um, to... Boy, that camera's pretty fast. So you put your right foot here and your right hand there, and you lift yourself up, put your left foot on this little step pad on the strut. And the whole purpose of doing this is so that you can go up top, and I'll 
try to oh that's pretty quick so you can pop up here and unscrew the fuel cap and you want to visually look inside and see how much fuel you've got um, and then there's also I'll see if I can find an image of it and put it in the video here but there's also um, what they call a fuel stick which basically it's like a straw with uh, markings on it for gallons so you drop the straw down into the bottom of the tank put your thumb over the end and pull it up and there'd be you know your fuel would stay in the straw and at the marking of how many gallons it is and they're specifically made for a type of aircraft so um, there's one for Cessna 152s one for 172s I mean they are specific to make some models of aircraft so you couldn't use one in another you'd have inaccurate readings uh, and then you put your cap back on make sure it's tight and um, it, again not modeled here but most typically there's a small chain that attaches the gas cap to a rivet out here somewhere uh, so the gas cap doesn't go flying. Not always the case, but often the case. Uh, okay, so we come back down here now. Um, I'm going to rotate. And at this point, uh, we would... Yep, at the nose. So this is your little... Uh, we'll pop this open. That's an access hatch. That gives gets you to your... Um, your uh, engine oil so you could check the engine oil um, and it, I think it's uh, 152 I want to say is six quarts I think I have to refresh my memory on that one I'm not positive but you would uh, check it and add if needed and it's it's not uncommon to have to add oil um, you know they do burn in oil sometimes um, you know obviously newer engines wouldn't so much but when you're in training it's not uncommon they usually kept up pretty good um anyway so you finish that up close that check around the rest of the nose again any dings damage stuff that look, looks really horrible um and then on the front here i had the speed turned down um we would check inside here that's Kind of a, a depiction of your engine there. Make sure there's no bird's nest or blockages in here because that's where your main engine cooling is, the air flowing in right there. Um, you check your prop spinner to make sure that there's nothing there um, that's concerning. You would check up and down the leading edge of the propeller. And this is where you'd want to always make sure you think of it as it, the engine could start, this prop could spin and kill me. Um, every time you're walking around it, if you have that mental attitude, that you just be careful and you walk around it, not as close as this camera, you know, but you want to just kind of lightly run your hand on it, feel for any nicks, dings, front and back, on both ends of it, um, and because it spins fast, the vibrations could be huge, if you have small cracks, it's not a good thing, uh, you want to have it looked at by uh, AMP, um, which is an airframe power plant uh, mechanic, basically, an airplane mechanic. Um, and from the front, you also want to make sure this little filter th screen is not plugged. The landing light looks okay. It would be tested if you were at night as well. Check your nose wheel inflation. Uh, make sure your strut looks okay. It's not leaking fluid necessarily. Uh, your steering linkages are, are secured. Um, and then we'd come up this side of the nose. Um, and we would take a look. There's a, right about there, there's a static port. Uh, for the instrument systems inside. Basically, it's a little pinhole. Um, you want to make sure it's not blocked or covered. A uh, nice trick that instructors like to do when you're doing a pre-flight is they'll take a piece of scotch tape, a very small piece of scotch tape, and just cover the hole. And then if you get in and get to the end of the runway, you know, you, you'll know, some of your instruments won't work right, and the, the instructor will then know that, well, you didn't do your pre-flight because you didn't notice that that was covered. Um, that's a neat little trick. So watch out for that. But anyway, um, then here, again, there's that step. There's the other step in your handle. So here would climb up, uh, do the fuel check on this side, again, with that stick, if I can find a picture. Um, and then there would be the sump drain over here. You take a fuel sample. Um, make sure it was good. Again, checking the strut. Do a tie down if it was there. Check that this pitot tube, this is help for your airspeed. There's a little hole in the bottom for drainage. I think it's in the back, maybe. 
uh, maybe in the front. I thought it was in the back. But also the hole in front. That's like where the ram air goes in. Uh, you want to make sure none of that's blocked. Um, this little guy up here. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. And yeah. Um, that is actually where your stall horn is. So if you get the wrong angle attack, too, too steep an angle of attack, you're not generating the lift over the wings anymore. Um, I think it's like a suction there that will actually sound the horn inside the cockpit for you to let you know that, hey, you're about to stall. And um, some people will test that by sucking on it. I don't recommend that because if there's bugs or bees in there, you don't want to suck one into your mouth. Um, basically, I've just always checked to make sure it looked clear. Um but maybe there's better ways to do that. I'll have to look that up, too. Again, I'm just refreshing here. So, anyway, um, continue along the front end of the wing. No dicks, no nicks or dings. Uh, check the lights, the wing tip. And then, again, the same thing on, that we did on the other side. Lift the elevator. Check for its connecting rods and any cotter pins. Make sure everything's secure. Um, and then again, on the flap on this side, we'll give it a little tug up and down, make sure it's secure, and come in here and check that all this hardware is secured. Um, we're pretty good there. And then lastly, we'd come down here and check this tire um, for inflation. You know, you give it a kick, make sure it's not flat, obviously flat, but, you know, always good to have a pressure gauge if, uh, if, you, if it was available. Check your brakes on the inside, brake lines, all that stuff. Um, and then, at the, you know, at this point, you'd pretty much remove your chocks if you had any on there. And and if you had a tow bar in the front, you take that off and put it away. And that effectively is the outside of a pre-flight on a Cessna 152. So I guess uh, it's probably long enough at this point. I will leave it here for this episode. Um Next, we'll come in and we'll start doing the before start, before engine start, and uh, we'll start getting ready to go flying. So uh, take care, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Let, let me know if uh, you know some thoughts in the comments below, um, what you think of this uh, potential series that we're doing here. If you think it'll be helpful for you, let me know, and uh, we'll catch you next time.